We bring in retired Army General, Major General Dana Petard. He served multiple combat tours in the Middle East and in 2014 led the U.S. effort to stop the spread of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. He knows these regions extraordinarily well. Major General, welcome. Very good to have you with us. Sir, well, good let's, afternoon, let's start with, Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much. Well, what is your assessment of what looks like a major escalation in war in the Middle East? Well, there is concern, obviously, of a, of a wider war in the Middle East. Uh, but what Israel is doing uh, with Hezbollah, uh, they have the right to defend themselves. Uh, Hezbollah has been lobbing missiles and rockets consistently against Israel, northern Israel, really since the day after October 7th, so since October 8th. Uh, Israel was, was doing what they could, but they were certainly occupied by the fight in Gaza. Now they're able to uh, switch some resources to the north. Um, against Hezbollah. And, and Hezbollah has got to learn that they can't keep lobbing missiles at northern Israel. Uh, Israel has, has had 70,000 of its citizens displaced from northern Israel because of those rocket attacks. All right. Um, Nasrallah, let's take a look at the chart that shows we heard in the report that he is alone at the top of his chain of command. Let's take a look at that um, chart, which shows at the chart, which shows who has been taken out um, so far. And it shows that Nasrallah is, uh, according to this information from the IDF, he's lost one, two, three, four, five, six of his very top people. Only two remain. And when you listen to the take that we get from reporters on the ground there, the people of Lebanon are not getting what they need and want in society from Hezbollah. Is this structure weakened? Is Nasrallah in danger of losing his position at this point? Well, the structure has absolutely been weakened, uh, especially uh, the recent uh, death of Ibrahim Akil, yes. who was a trusted senior advisor uh, to Nasrallah. Um, is, is, is the Hezbollah command structure going to go away? No. Um, they'll replace them, but it'll be very, very difficult to do that. With regard to this window that we're in in the United States, as we wait for an election to take place just a few weeks from now, there are a lot of questions about who is in command at the moment. This is President Biden speaking about this earlier today. We have not seen uh, him speaking out about much of this in recent weeks, but here he is. I've been briefed on the latest developments in Israel and Lebanon. My team is in constant contact with their counterparts, and we're working to de-escalate in a way that allows people to return to their homes safely. Um, he appeared to be reading that off a statement uh, in the Oval Office today. Your thoughts on whether or not we're vulnerable, given how close we are to the election? Well, elections and transitions are always uh, points of time that would always concern me as a military person uh, in, in other places in the world. But this is the United States of America. Uh, President Biden is in charge until uh, his inauguration uh, or uh, inauguration of the next president in January. Uh, so we clearly have someone who is the president and they're in charge. Uh, but it is a point that the rest of the world is looking at. If they feel like there's weakness, uh, they'll take advantage of or they'll attempt to take advantage of that weakness. With regard to these pagers and that attack, um, one security expert from the Kennedy School today said that these really have changed the game and that once you start launching these sorts of attacks that are attached to technology, other countries can accept similar kinds of um, battle technique. Do you agree with that? And do you think that this attack was you know, truly a game changer? Well, I, th I thought the attack was brilliant in so many ways. Um, the know-how to do that has been exercised before, but not on that scale, and not that scale to where all at one time all the pagers blew up um, with significant leaders and, and even lower-level leaders uh, in Hezbollah. And then they did it again with, with walkie-talkies. So uh, it, is it a game-changer? No, it, but it was an innovative tactic. Um, that helped Israel in the opening stages of this new campaign. 
And what we're going to see more of this in the future. Yeah, um, I understood. Uh, what about this decision to send more troops to the region? I think there is a lot of concern in this country about where all of this is headed. It's a very scary time uh, when you see this lack of stability in the Middle East. And now you see more of our service members on their way there. Well, I think we saw that uh, in October. It's precautionary. Uh, we've got troops uh, throughout the region and additional troops to help uh, as far as force protection and in other things, I think, is just a prudent decision. General Chard, thank you very much. Great to have you with us, as always, you, sir. I hope you'll join us again. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.